Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You know, uh, when I think about Rob and uh, his interaction with, uh, I think you would agree, uh, Oscar, that uh, you participate with uh, listeners when we're on these road trips. I do uh, probably to uh, to a certain extent as well when we're hanging out. Mm-hmm. We had breakfast with a bunch of listeners right. on uh, Saturday morning. But nobody hangs with the, the, the jolly listeners like Rob Spiewak. And his impression uh, is, uh, well, not impression, but his image on the show is one of sweetness and light. So when he comes to me before the show today and he talks about what he refers to as the D.C. Zoo <laughs> and, and hating a zoo, which I would think would be, you know, right up his alley, like King's Dominion mm-hmm. and all things that are fun and spectacular. And you are you, you seemed to be filled with hate today about uh, about the zoo and well, i'm just curious what's wrong there is a, an ongoing story in the washington dc area for my entire life that i've never loved and that is the pandas yeah well i'm with you i i, but I don't I, like I, the pandas but i'm considered a hateful monster so i mean me hating the idea of the uh, pandas, that's on pandas, brand for mike yes but i just it i always felt on brand. <laughs> on brand he's hateful true monster true to on form brand. <laughs> well give me some of that hate because i feel that they are way overrated they don't do anything i've heard about them my entire life. when i was a boy it was ling ling and sing sing ling ling and sing sing right i, I was I, when you were a boy i was a man that's right and uh <laughs> Come over here, boy. Sit on my sit on my lap. Let me tell you of these so black Rob and white wonders. <laughs> sit right up here. <laughs> sit right up here, young man. Oh no, stay, stay. Stay longer. <laughs> no. uh, but anyway, oh, that's gross. All right. You want me go. to do voices for you, boy? Yeah. Here you go. This is <laughs> this is a character we call Charlie. <laughs> so we we've always heard about these giant pandas, and it's a very big deal in Washington D.C. But every time I've been to the zoo, and I've been to the zoo maybe 10, 12 times in my life. Yeah. Okay. They never do anything. They're often not there. Well, now wait. Now wait. Now hold. Let me stop you there. Because you're talking about zoo animals, by their very nature, don't really do anything. (laughs) That's true. How you doing? (laughs) Hey, man, we are zoo animals. 15 minutes after the hour. Hey, uh, if you got 15, if you get in there at 730, you got 15 minutes to get there. It's Mad Dog and the Panda. How you doing? Uh, By the way, uh, Jack Diamond, morning man in Washington, D.C., posting on Facebook uh, how Donny Osmond was a super nice guy. Jack, you need to get back in the game. (laughs) You need to get back in. Get another job. Don't post like that. If he's down to the Osmond memories. Yes, we all know Donny was a nice guy, and uh, you're posting some morning show bit you did where you have 5,000 people in your heyday. You know, you need to get back in the game if you're starting to compliment Donny Osmond. I'm I'm just saying, all right, I agree with you, Donny Osmond. Yes, I I found to be one of the nicest men I have ever interviewed, a tremendous human being. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see Jack Diamond also posted this morning, Empire State Building, impressive. That, you know, and there's no reason Jack Diamond, there's, there are a thousand reasons why I should not be back on the radio, but there is not one reason why Jack shouldn't be back on the radio because he's, he's fine for what it is now. Yeah, well, he left. Uh, he left on top. It wasn't him. It was, uh, right. it was uh, corporate change. Well, none of us left, you know, without uh, format changes and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. We didn't do anything wrong. No. But I mean, I think Jack would fit into the kind of you know that type of show. It, you know, fits today. It's why he lasted longer than many of us. I think he could you know? out McFly Tommy. Oh, well, he did. I think he yes. could completely out McFly Tommy. Yes, absolutely. But speaking but, of but those anyway, two, what speaking of the zoo? Mike, speaking of McFly and Diamond, don't you think they would love to talk about pandas? Because yeah. it's a great yeah. local vanilla DC and, story. And, and pandas would be <laughs> as uh, hot today as they were back in the day they are. when we were making fun of pandas Red because panda it was the action. local news. Right. Let's go out and see if Ling Ling has ejaculated yet. Yeah, well, you're out there and, and Bob. It's Bebe Bo- this time. Yeah, it's but Bebe. Bo- 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 Ling Ling the female, too, so. I might have had that one wrong. Well, if she can. 
<laughs> Definitely keep still, her at the zoo. I'm still jet lagged after last night. <laughs> I know, I know. But, Talking about the pandas, but it's such a job. It's the equivalent of sending somebody out to the airport the day before. What they do is they'll, like Channel 5, which is our beautiful local news station here and who I spend my you mornings watch them, with. You watch them more than I do. And so it's like, let's go to Bob Barnard, who's out at the uh, National Zoo. And he's like, hey, guys, uh, Allison and Steve, the pandas are not actually out of the enclosure this morning. <laughs> right, right. But you, uh, go, you can see this uh, grassy they're, they're, area. They're eating bamboo in the corner where they can't see we have cameras. some B-roll of them eating bamboo from when Nixon was president. If we can go to, do we have that? Can we go to that, please? And so all of the, well, the big deal is that we've got this deal with China. That if in America, China, we, if we, sad, if we, sad, I am now putting a tariff on the pandas. Tariff panda. Right. I will now be suspending all imports of bamboo to the National Zoo. Mr. President, have you seen the video of the female panda ejaculating? Yes. It was back during the Nixon administration. So we're going through all of this, and they've got this deal, this deal with China, that if a domestic-born giant panda reaches the age of four, it has to be shipped back to China. It's part but of it was their, born in the United States, pre- so it's got American citizenship. It's part of their presi- <laughs> it can preservation. Be, it can of be president. Species. That's right. But that's the deal. Sorry, it's part of the preservation were, of the species. The preservation of the species. Yes. species. But I think the original Ling Ling and Sing Sing were actually gifts from China. So there's probably a deal in place that if we breed, we got to send them back at age four. And so this has been a big deal all week here at Mike Wells. That's when like they start go. working at the factories, Mike. That's right. They make <laughs> Nikes. <laughs> iPhones. So it's they what? have to go over and make iPhones. Well, oh, they're great there. because those big paws are so soft. Never <laughs> scratch the below. screen. <laughs> but you know what? They're bad at lacing. They cannot lace a shoe. <laughs> so they won't, screens are so wonderful. <laughs> they won't scuff the new Jordans. <laughs> Pandas. So Pandas, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, it was the going away week for four-year-old Bebe. Bebe, Bebe the Panda, who once again... Is Isn't in the that enclosure. Beyonce's uh, nickname? I Bay believe Bay, so. It? I believe it's so. Bay. It's Bay. Just Bay. Bay. It's Bay. Bay. Not yeah. Bay Bay. So we also have footage of Beyonce eating bamboo. Bay Bay. In the enclosure. But we, Bay that Bay. makes no sense. It doesn't. No. So last week <laughs> they had liked like, it. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. It he did. tried to sell he it to us. It didn't make any yeah, sense. I know, You're yeah. not buying what I'm selling. No, so no, you know what? We'll move on. They had like hot chocolate with Bay Bay. They had morning meetings with Bay Bay. It's like, come and get your picture at the enclosure. You won't see Bay Bay, but this is the shack where Bay Bay lives. You know, and the zoo is opening an hour early, so you can come in and not see Bay Bay. Because Bay saying goodbye. Yes, because it was Bay Bay's going away week. By the way, is Bay Bay, and I, look, if you are, I, I don't want to offend any ethnic group or any pandas, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm an older man, so please bear with me from a different yes. time. Is Bebe going to be released into the wild or is Bebe going to be eaten? <laughs> I don't think they eat the panda. No. Okay, I just don't know. They, I mean, Asian cultures uh, consume uh, different foods. They do. And that's what and makes the world so great, Mike, is that we're all different, but we all have great similarities as a well. A durian, which is the stink fruit. That's right. And and panda? And we all remember Tropic Thunder, where a panda attacked um, <laughs> Tug Speedman, <laughs> and he had to make it into a suit of sorts. Yes, of course. <laughs> we all remember that. Yes. So today, Bebe is on a chartered Federal Express jet and actually arrived to China safely. Mm-hmm. But the thing that bothered me all morning, to your point, is they kept calling the plane the Panda Express. <laughs> Which, as you know, is this a is after fast food we Chinese restaurant. Yesterday, yes, this is a fast food Chinese restaurant. So you're probably right. giving the wrong image of Bebe. Payway better than Panda Express. Oh my God! Oh, okay. Well, I found out. Pony told me that Payway is actually the fast food version of um, PF Chang's. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sort so of that's right. why Small you're getting the high quality, like a mid tier. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that works. I'll take Payway over PF Chang's. To be honest yeah. with you. So I thought Panda Express was a movie as well. No. I don't think so, no. Kung Fu Panda. I think that's Polar, Polar Express. Express. Polar yes. Express. That's right. Come on. Yes. Polar Express. It's full color, not black and white. Could so, be well, the panda's black and white. Yeah, that's what there I was So about. they're calling it the Panda Express. The Panda Express. Express, and you know what? I'm just it's so, so go- lazy. It's very it's so lazy. lazy. There's a huge panda on the side of the plane, which I thought was cool. Yeah, but it's uh, but at the same time, you're stealing a branded and marketed uh, fast food chain in the United States. It's been very successful. And I think right. it's cheating. It is cheating. He just cheated us. And now they're going to be throwing he an didn't orange get chicken off on the, the side. Pan- <laughs> he didn't, the panda didn't get off the cock plane. 
fan. Mike, the Why are they making the such a big deal about uh, this bear? <laughs> and I don't think they're technically bears. Are they bears? Pandas? It's yeah. a panda baby. bear. It's I know, but we say panda say, bear. I, well, I think they're they're giant pandas. I don't know, Pony. See if they are technically what? Do you bears. Think they're their they own are. species. Uh, well, yeah. Well, they're definitely their own species. They're, about they're technically reptiles. Are they? Mike, it's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you might be right that they're actually a different. Yeah, it's not like a grizzly species. or a brown bear. They're it's different. not a bear. Well, we'll check. We'll find it. it. Might have the same species, not if not the same genus. You ever seen that viral it is video? A bear. With, okay, it's a bear. Okay, okay. <laughs> way to go, Rob. <laughs> Um, hey, this is what we do. We live and learn. Have you ever seen that viral video of the guy riding his bicycle through the woods when he uh, is chased by the bear? The no. Bear? Uh-uh. Yeah, it's a fascinating video. Viral video. Mm. Did they? Did Sorry, he... I stopped the show. With <laughs> that's that, fine. That's, uh, was he? Was, was he it caught? a panda? No, he wasn't caught. But he he goes booking down the path, and he's got that's the GoPro camera on his. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about, Mike. I know. He's this got is the GoPro camera yeah, on yeah, his yeah, head, yeah, on his yeah, helmet. Yeah. And he keeps turning back, yeah, and you see and the thing there. is like literally yeah, on his Galloping. Heels. I've seen it. Galloping. And yes. Then, well, you just told me you hadn't well, seen it. Well, I thought when you mentioned the fact that it's the GoPro and the turning, that's what made me think of it. I thought it was like an observation video. And then he veers off the path, and mm-hmm. you see him look to his right, and there's the bear. Yeah. Like the bear is right there with him the whole time, and the bear moseys on off. That uh, definitely uh, a bear species in that video. Yes. Yes. But but I guess we now know, according to Pony, that pandas are indeed real bears. Yes, they are. Different subspecies of bears. I thought by now we would have saved them. Don't you think the these efforts, yeah, these conservation thought, efforts, that well, they're no longer on their endangered species? Yeah, list? but see, they live in China. Mm. You know. Oh, and where, so they can they? only have one baby. <laughs> the one, no. The one panda China policy. pollutes. China pollutes. Oh, I they thought you talked about, about the, the the limitations no. on people too. Right. That, well, they're living here in Chinatown, <laughs> and they're closing all the factories down. <laughs> I don't know what you with me you today. are jet lagged. I don't know because I am also totally you you right. use the I, phrase. I, I got a good night's sleep two nights in a row, and I'm still like blah 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 blah. Said, I got I ate all my the guy on the bicycle. Today. You said he was booking. He was booking <laughs> down the trail. The Smithsonian has nothing to promote. This is how they get the word out about. What's going on at the, the Smithsonian zoo. has everything to promote. They've got Lincoln's hat. Yeah, but this is a big, this is already, I would say, in their PR playbook, where when we ship one out, we got to do this, 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 this to get maximum, maximum exposure. What What's going to happen to the panda when it gets to China? Um, put it in the zoo there? They will keep it in captivity is what I heard. But I don't know if they do a zoo. They, the Chinese don't have time for leisure activities. They don't go to the zoo. They work. Why do they Why do they have to uh, get the bear back after four years? It's part of the agreement. If we can get our pandas to screw, we get to keep the baby for four years, and then we got to give it back. Because oh, okay. So so they're, they loan their bear. It's a bear yeah, lease for, program. For, for mating yeah. purpose. It's like right. a breeding program. It's like a car lease. Three to four years. This right. in case, this case, four years. And you can't put too many miles on the bear. And this is a huge success. And it was a this Bebe is, is a huge massive, success. massive. Very, because very Because most, most bears, Mike, uh, I guess number-wise, they don't, they don't make it past like a few months living in captivity when they're born in captivity. Oh, here's the phrase I always remember from all the coverage where they say, and when the baby is born, it's the size of a stick of butter. Right. That's what they always say when a baby panda is born. Why is it always food with you? Because they <laughs> say it. It's it, it was ingrained in it. It's for butter. Them. I like butter. I was thinking, <laughs> hmm, could I spread it on bread? This That's panda? amazing, though. It's in, it's a tiny little and oftentimes thing. They, it looks like a dog's lipstick, doesn't it? It does, a and they bit. oftentimes get killed because pandas not bright roll over on their baby. I remember they, but that. But they don't, they don't cannibalize, do they? they no, don't no, no, like no, no. They don't actually think it's butter. And they're not, they're not carnivores. They eat uh, vegetation. Oh, but right? this was a big deal last week. I think it was a Thursday of the Bebe going away festivities. Come on out and see Bebe eat sugar cane instead of bamboo because it's a treat. Oh, okay. But it's, it's kind of similar to uh, inconsistency to bamboo. I believe so, but sweeter. Sugar cane and bamboo are a similar oh, type. Yeah. yeah, but you want to make sure you don't give the, the panda You don't want cavities. bamboo in your mojito, though. So what is bothering you about all this? Too that, much coverage what, on something whole, that doesn't matter. It doesn't well, you matter. You don't care about the pandas, pandas at all. I mean, no, it's they're a, fine. An endangered. Species. But you're Mr. Fluff. But you what like about fluff, Mike? What about the pachyderms? What about elephants? Show me some elephant news. I like that. I oh, like. I love elephants. You know what I really I, like? I, you know I what love I love? Them. Polar bears. Mm. Yeah, they're more fun. And then that's the that's a an animal that's endangered. Due to what we're doing with the climate, exactly. That's, uh, you know, that's directly impacting. But polar bears polar get bears all the run. They, they they don't need any more. Uh, I guess awareness. Well, they had a really good run with Coca Cola, but I'm not seeing that anymore. 
You mean the Coca Cola band, uh, polar oh, bear? Yeah, I love those. Commercials. Oh, they're back. Those commercials put me in the they're air. Back. They're, yeah, back. they're back. Yeah, yeah I'm not seeing the can. Not seeing it on the can. How do you, the spell, can. How do you spell the bay bay we're talking about? I think it's B E B E. No, it's not. I think it's B A I B A I. That's bye bye. But they pronounce it bye 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 bye. No, bay bay. Bay bay. Michael, tell us. And I'm um, looking. so bay bay is one of two. F- no. Oni, and what was your dad's theory about the panda bears? Oh, he said that the pandas were all bean bags, and occasionally they would mm. just close the the exhibit because every time we would go when I was a kid, they they wouldn't be moving, and then you'd come back ten minutes later and the exhibit's closed. And he said that's when they would just move the bean bags around and then reopen the exhibit, and they're like, "Oh, look, they moved! Look at that!" <laughs> a dark sense of humor. And here. then they would that's fall right. asleep you on know, their babies. God rest his soul. What yeah, a wonderful yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like your dad, and I never he met was, him. What a moment. Guy. The baby was the size of a stick of butter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bloom Boys, the beanbags are out. Oh, that's right. that's a category. <laughs> oh, no. Gross. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Oh, here it is. Okay. Bye-bye, baby. <laughs> Headline. That's why Bye, baby. Yeah. It's, 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 a giant baby. panda will fly out in a crate in his own private FedEx plane on a nonstop flight to Chengdu, China. Yes. Millions of Americans have watched Bay Bay grow up at the National Zoo, either in person or online via the popular panda cab. Some visitors and viewers of Bay Bay watched uh. him eat his first shoot of bamboo. And to, for some reason, Harry Carey should be doing this. I right? agree. I, like I agree. The giant panda will fly out of the crate on his old private <laughs> FedEx plane on a nonstop flight to Chang. Do China. <laughs> Millions of Americans have watched Bay Bay grow up at the National Zoo, either in person or online via the popular Panda Cam. What Cam? Harry? Panda Cam. <laughs> Thank you. Some visitors and viewers of Bay Bay watched him eat his first shoot of bamboo and take his first tumble in the grass. Oh. He was barred in 2015. <laughs> and that same year, Michelle Obama and Peg Liu and First Ladies of the United States at the People's Republic of China named him. There it is. Uh, it's just blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is. You it's know what else? Blah, blah, Pandas blah. love playing in the snow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So having a panda in a zoo boosts its status significantly. Uh, as the Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland found out in 2011 when giant panda Tian Tian arrived. Why do they all have two names? That I don't it's know. Cultural. Yeah, so, so you don't do a deep dive on these things. Well, well, I mean, it's been around for, maybe it's tradition. Rob has two Bs. Uh, 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 Oscar? Oscar, uh, yes. Os- Oscar? Yes. Ro- Roscoe. Caring for giant pandas isn't cheap or easy. Ooh. Ooh. The Washington, Atlanta, Memphis, and San Diego zoos are said to have spent thirty-three mm. million dollars mm. more than they received from exhibiting pandas from two thousand to two thousand three. Mm. Mm. That amazing. A yeah, big zoo is losing money. Yeah, yeah but think about the heartstrings it pulls at, right? Yeah, and that hot chocolate that you got to drink with the bear—that was expensive too. Come have hot <laughs> chocolate with Bebe. Have 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 you ever seen the the uh, pandas moving? Mm, I, I, don't have, I, have. I, I don't believe I have. I don't believe I have. Saw them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I still like the great ape house. That to me is the greatest. That's uh, all, you know, they're, they're, certainly they're the, the best closest, smelling. They're the closest to us, and they're they're usually if you can find one that's uh, you know out and about. They're usually quite well, animated. I, as a kid, I always remember the the lion exhibit where you actually would see like these 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 predators right in front of you, down below you. Would you climb Amazing. over? Uh, no, I wouldn't climb over. But as a kid, there's always that you're guy. shot. The very first time you ever get to see this, if you're lucky enough to live in a town with a wonderful zoo. Yes, you, I just I remember my brother and I being like, I can't believe they're right here. This is nuts. Yeah. Are you going to? Uh... I mean, will they get another panda over here to breed? Or is that what they're going to well, do? Well, I think we, we still have, have pandas. We, we still have two, okay. right? Yeah. Because they're the parents of, of Bay Bay. All right. The so, National Zoo, I always thought, as far as D.C. goes, D.C., which uh, now finally has some sports teams offering yeah. joy yeah. to the people of Washington. But for years when the teams weren't winning and it was very frustrating, the National Zoo, I always thought, was kind of a win. It was always kind of yeah. well well done, well put People together. come into town, you're like, what, do, what should we do? Go to the National Zoo. And in your case, you live in D.C., yes. very easy to hop on a metro. Mm-hmm. Go to the zoo. No very, parking very at the zoo, though. 
Yeah, what do you mean? There's parking. A parking is a horrible situation at the zoo. <laughs> it, you know, you don't like live action. You like recreated action. If you can give like me a robot animals. panda, <laughs> you know, no, you like you like artifice. So you enjoy. That's why you like Jerry Lewis. No, no. You know you what like, I love? You like artifice. I that's love what you. I do love horses. I love horses. Arabian horses? Yeah, well, what well, I like, wait, like, wait, for example. Wait. That's brand new. Hold yeah, this yeah. is brand new. If I, I ever go to, horses. well, yeah, I, you know, my grandfather's best friend raced horses, so I spent a lot of time hanging out in Charlestown before it was. That kind of horse. Oh, well, but also, heck? well, no, not the gambling, but I like horses themselves. The glue horses. And also. I never knew you were a horse enthusiast. When you go. You live close to horse country where you live. When you go to uh, Bush Gardens, the kids <laughs> hate it because I always have to go and stare at the Clydesdales. I think they're the oh. most amazing things on earth. I had no idea. The, the that Clydesdales you... are the panda bear of uh, the horse community. In what way? Because they're so they're, you don't really see Clydes, Clydesdales anymore. You just don't see them. And, we, and how, do we have to mail them back to China? No, I'm <laughs> saying that when you see them, I think Budweiser. most people most people go and, and mail them to St. Louis. Most people when I uh, they had them out for the World Series. I took a hard left and I went to go look at the horses. Aren't they incredible? You like them? Yes. I, and I, too, would be, if you said to me, if the three of us were together yeah. and you said, Mike, the Clydesdales are down here. Yes. Do you want to go down and see them? I'd say, is it uphill or downhill? And if he said downhill, <laughs> I'd go down and see them. Yeah, I took a, a detour to go see them. At Bush Gardens, you can see them in the stables. And also, if you take the sky ride, you can see them from above. And it's amazing. Have you ever looked at, uh, you know, down, down there? Yeah. Yes. I would think that mm -hmm. would be just yeah. As you said about the Great Ape House, Mike, it's like looking at ourselves. Oh, that looks That's familiar. Wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's fantastic. All. Have you? I didn't know you were an equestrian fan. Are you? A, I don't have you ridden ever, a horse. I've ridden. I don't like riding at all. Uh, I, I like to okay. watch them. This is teeing one up for him to go. Uh, what don't you like about riding, Rob Spiewak? I'm just curious about that. When the horses complain, they say one at a time, please. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. <laughs> you can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. On the entertainment capital of the world. Oh. Oh. What's this world? That's Lieutenant Hurwitz. Severe shell shock. Thinks he's Ethel Merman. You'll be swell. You'll be great. Gonna have the whole world on a plate. Starting here. Start now. Honey, everything's coming. War as hell. The stewardess said that both pilots. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Doctor, I've checked everyone. Mr. Stryker's the only one. What flying experience have you had? Oh, I flew single engine fighters in the Air Force, but this plane has four engines. It's an entirely different kind of flying, altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind, kind of flying. flying. Besides, I haven't touched any kind of plane in six years. Dr. Rumek says the sick people are getting worse and we're running out of time. I've got to concentrate, concentrate. I've got to concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Hello? 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 Echo, echo, echo. Pinch hitting for Pedro Bourbon. Manny Mota, Mota, Mota. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Johnny, how much more coffee? No thanks. Hey, you know what they say. See a brawl to get that booty ackle. <laughs> Lay it down and smack them, yak them. Cole got the beat. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. The oh, Mike O'Mara Show back in the bosom of the uh, Podcast Village Studios in our nation's capital. On the air now for you and uh, brought to you today by uh, a wonderful new advertiser uh, that we've had. Well, not that new, actually. We just love them. Uh, the show is heard all over the world from uh, the borough of Hohokus, New Jersey. Did you know that those hyphens are actually in the name? It's the only American city with hyphens. In it. Ho, ho, cuss. <laughs> yes. New Jersey, uh, Barrington, Rhode Island, Mesa, Arizona, Lutherville, Maryland, Abilene, Texas, Hobart, Australia. Speaking of uh, like bears, the koala bears down there 
Did you see any of that where they've got all these horrible fires down in Australia? Oh, I saw a lady save one. Yeah, oh, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really horrible. They're, and they're by the way, koalas are not bears; they're rabbits. See, that's what you got the panda yeah. confused. Marsupials. With. Marsupials, not rabbits. I'm kidding, Our show today brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. Sound the trumpets. The 2019 <laughs> Fab Fit Fun Winter Box is on sale now. Uh, the Winter Box is the perfect way to treat yourself or others while you get ready for the holidays with their amazing box of products. Fab Fit Fun takes the hassle out of shopping by doing it for you. Each box is customized to your interests and delivered right to your door. These boxes sell out fast, so sign up for yours today. Carla flips out. Um, there's something like that she was using as an exfol- exfoliant on uh, on my face a scrub. Uh, the other day that I think she got from FabFitFun. It's got lots of great stuff. Christmas, four times a year. She screams, she dances, she loves. Such laughter. Shh, don't tell. But I'm going to steal her Bluetooth shower speaker. Mm. Yes. It's phenomenal. I love FabFitFun, too. Uh, FabFitFun, a seasonal subscription box with full-size beauty, fitness, fashion, and lifestyle products. It retails for $49.98, but I'm sorry, $49.99, but always has a value of over $200. That's the truth, Ruth. Uh, go to FabFitFun.com to sign up and start getting the box for a life well lived. Use promo code TMOS to get a $10 off your first, or, or get $10 off, not a $10 off. That's Come right. On. Let me start again. Please. (laughs) Use promo code TMOS to get $10 off your first box. That's over $200 for only $39.99. It is a great deal. It's great. Uh, Remember, go to FabFitFun.com and use my code TMOS to get $10 off your first FabFitFun box. Uh, Who had Vegas Throat uh, day number four? This guy. Everyone I talk to has got it. It's, I think it's the dryness uh, well, out there. It's, it was it was drier than I. Uh, I've been in Las Vegas so many a million people, times. Yeah, you know, I, I have been in Las plane. Vegas a million yeah. times. I have never, ever, ever felt it drier than it was, and that's what gets you the uh, the Vegas throat, mm-hmm. and it lasts. And I didn't, uh, you know, enjoy all that much hooch. To be honest with you, it was just late nights and talking, and dry, dry, dry is the number one reason because I really didn't, uh, you know, outside of doing the show. Uh, you know, but but a crowded restaurant and bar where we're meeting people and socializing. Got to raise your that voice. Will, uh, that will that will get to you. So mm. it's uh, it's very very frustrating. And the drinking habits don't help. <laughs> you know. uh, so Friday night, I believe that uh, I was in the Golden Nugget. Carla grabbed me by the arm. Uh, I was pissy about it because I wanted to stay out all night. Right. And she saved. I, I'm I'm not kidding you. She saved me from myself on Friday night. I would have been, uh, you know, in in terrible shape for the rest Mm -hmm. of the weekend. We had a Saturday night show to do, which, uh, by the way, that's what counts. We were really psyched to do that. Now, I heard the drinking stories about both of you, Mm -hmm. and I only heard one for each person. And you can can take them in order, because I always like to analyze the... uh, Once we get done doing shows, uh, there's a letdown, and uh, uh, we release some steam. Now, in Oscar's case, it was Saturday uh, yeah, night into I didn't Sunday go out morning. On Friday. Right. Yeah. I went straight in back Rob's to the hotel. Case, in Rob's case, it was Friday night uh, into Saturday morning, which I, you know, I might have reevaluated your choice there. I was told when I came in Saturday morning right. to the downtown Grand Hotel right. that into the wee hours of, uh, of the morning, it was the Rob show. That you were putting on a Rob, you were seated not at the bar. I think you were seated over in the seating area. I don't remember it being excessively late, but I do remember okay. hitting right. several tables, and there was concern because my <laughs> uncle Bruce has some mobility issues, and he right. he gets a scooter when he yeah. goes Vegas, which is great because it allows him to keep up and do everything he wants to do, and it affords him the the luxury of comfort. So right. I the first does he have one at home. Yeah, he does, but he rents okay. one when he gets into Vegas. Well, so you have something to look forward to. Hand me down. <laughs> Let's look at the will. Uh, so <laughs> when I get back to the hotel immediately following the show and go into the uh, the restaurant bar at the downtown Grand, I immediately see my dad, his wife, and Bruce at a table. So I go over to to say hey because I didn't see them really after the show, and because that's a four seater table, it's, they're right. seated at the chairs, and at the fourth slot is Bruce's scooter. And so I just naturally sat on the scooter, and a lot of people came up to me and said, "You okay? Have you?" It looks so. He looks so right on that scooter. They're like, oh, "I guess he's riding around." Here. <laughs> Did you witness him on the scooter? Oh, I saw Did the scooter. Yeah. I saw the scooter. And a lot of people. I think Rob's just giving up. 
Just oh, giving up. Okay, now, now, now. See, I, I'm, I'm going. But the scooter was the, more comfortable the, than the wooden chair. I mean, chairs. you look comfortable in it. The Never drinking story. I'm going, if I had been there, I would have absolutely insisted that you travel through the yeah. casino <laughs> the and travel evening. around on that. As a matter of fact, I pro- if I'd had the right amount of alcohol, I probably would have done the same. <laughs> but well, he I was got- fine when he got there. Like he just sat on it. Yeah, yeah. It was, there was no, there was just it was just a seat. And then I hit a few tables and talked to some people. And uh, now, when was- you say hit a few tables, you have to clarify. Oh, you're not talking about gambling. No, 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 no. I didn't gamble that night at all. You I just scooted. I um worked the people at the bar. Just said hi to everybody, thanked them, and because a lot of them I'd seen in the courtyard following the show, mm-hmm. right. but it was just, and you know, you sit down and you see some familiar faces and it, it's nice. And then, uh, then I went to bed and I remember there was a very diluted cocktail on my nightstand. So I apparently brought a cocktail up to the room, but didn't finish. It. I, um, I felt bad on Friday because, uh, a big part of what we do is we actually interact after the program. We it's have a quick the, meet and greet the and part. then we go. Um, did you it, say a quick, a quick meet and greet? Well, it, it depends Depends on the evening. For me, it was probably the shortest because of the injury that I just went. I, Shannon had to get back to the hotel. Cheated death. And well, your your entertainment dollar, uh, I believe, at a TMOS live show uh, between the show itself. I mean, if you're talking about per square yeah. foot, yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, shows that it's we about, put on and with the meet and greet. Uh, what would you say the total time? I mean, I think we're in Bruce I'd Springsteen say f- territory. Four to five hours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're we're there. Yeah. We're there. We uh, we hang. That's uh, that's. And, it's, you see, but, the thing and is, that is no. Look, that is because we want to do it. There's no pressure to do it. No. That is something that we want to do. We it, exceed it is, Bruce Springsteen's actual time commitment, and Bruce very seldom does of. the Bruce very seldom uh, does yeah. the court. I want to do it. Of course. I wanted to do it Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we I mean so Saturday I might have on Friday. No, Saturday was, was the greatest because Saturday, Saturday is when you was made super your, nice. You made your surprise. Well, Saturday appearance. I probably ducked out a little earlier than but, you guys. I went back into the green room and laid down. No, well, I didn't feel like that, Mike. Honestly, <laughs> I, I did not know that. We walked, I didn't lay down, but I put my feet. We yeah, walked. We walked back together. On and, Saturday, uh, you were there till the end. I came back out. Okay, came but back Saturday out. you okay. also so, did your surprise pop into the bar, which was great. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that was and, and and both I did that both Saturday morning. And Saturday. Yeah. Night. Okay. So because, I was, because I'll be honest with you, I love the downtown Grand Hotel where all our listeners was and uh, were. And I will tell you, like this, a convention, I, it really was. If I had to do it again, I would have stayed down there. I mean it. I, I heard. Mean it. It was I heard. Carla was not pleased. Uh, Carla was not, a beautiful place. Don't get me wrong. Where yeah. I was staying, but and I got a free offer, and I talked yeah. about it on the show. You're at the Four That's Queens with Jimmy, right? <laughs> the Four Queens. The Jimmy's backstage. When I when I first went in and <laughs> sat down after the show and the meet and greet Saturday night, Jimmy's just walking around the green room going, "You work hard. You work hard, Mike. You work hard." <laughs> You work really hard. I love Jimmy. This Jimmy, weekend, he is, is so Jimmy, great. I, I do not great. love Jimmy. It's impossible not to love. Now, right. I, will, I will get to my Jimmy my story weekend. on Sunday. It, it was Jimmy in the dress was there. You know, yeah. Jimmy with the lifesavers costume. Jimmy comes out on his own, does that for yeah. us. He's and prepared. We give bits. him the credit that he uh, <laughs> yeah. deserves. He loves it. Don't get me wrong. It's a vacation for him. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, he's a good guy. So you were holding a little bit of court, and I heard from. Multiple listeners because you're low keying it. As did I. You were, you were schnocker housed. I could have been Friday night. I, that you I were. Could have been. You were obliterated. Well, you know, Friday as night. I tried to reconstruct Friday night, um, it comes to it comes. We're dealing already with a time difference. So when we start the show at eight, <laughs> it's really eleven. Yeah. So when the show completes, it's right. actually really why, one a.m. Why can't you just own the fact that you? Are celebrating what is a once an, an annual. You heard every word I said, appearance. Oscar. Did I deny that I was no, drunk? No, but you're putting time zones into this. No, and but you get and you get ready and you want to come down and perhaps. What did f- I say to you after the show Friday night? What did I say when when I, we were in front of Dude Walker and I said something to you on Friday night? You, you said. Remember? Do you ever remember? You I said, said I said good because everybody thinks I'm always busting your. No, job. no. You what said did, that. What did I say to you personally? You on said Friday personally night? to me that the amount of work that we all put into this was extraordinary you made it very easy for you and you really appreciate all the you stuff did. We i did. said you that's did. what i mean that's mm-hmm. what i mean i was and i, I was meant being, it yeah and i meant it i felt on, that uh, and then and then it, and then saturday night uh you know i was uh, it was it was oscar on my left then me and then a man that i could not recognize on my right who was <laughs> who was so not there it was like you were so you were as hung over on that st- on that stage as i've ever seen i you. You I, were, I looked at rob during show rehearsal and i said rob Mike will be here in an hour. Get your shit together. (laughs) 
He did. It was like, <laughs> eh. and you were going for the brown liquor again on Saturday to get your to get your mojo. Actually, back. no. And that's, you know that's what? That's why we hit it. That's why we hit it. Actually, or was no, it ginger ale? I told Jimmy. I said, put a lot of ice and a lot of water, and I had have no interest in drinking that again. <laughs> but it was. But wait a minute. It was. It, it was a enough, soft drink. No, it was just enough crown to make it look brown. That's it. That's it. Denial. Denial. My <laughs> name is. It. But we were hiding it on you. A which true. Was, I do remember that. Yeah. A but, true ambassador of the TMOS nation. I do appreciate that. He actually went right. to see the people, which is yes. nice. Yeah. Yes. Which yes, is he nice. Did. And so, uh, anything notable from Friday night when you held court? Uh, like uh, it would have to be reminded to me. But I'm sure there was plenty of notable things that happened on Friday night. Okay, Saturday, I remember better. All right. Well, Saturday, uh, we were uh, in the same room. We were hanging out. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And Oscar, I got from uh, your buddy Michael uh, and his friend, who was a really yes, nice guy. Alex. I forgot what his friend's name uh, was. Uh, two things on that subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, Number one, th- those are really, really nice guys. And uh, number two, there is a theory that they are all, you know, you guys are all like boyfriends. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Like like we're all having you're sex all, together? The, 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 secret yes, handshake you're all club. Sex. Oh. Yeah. Yes, secret handshake club. Uh, but, but that. Because they're, you know, and, and by the way, people uh, that are sloppy like me mm-hmm. can probably look at people like that. And because you guys are all kind of tailored, beautiful, and well tanned. put together yes. with tans and designer sunglasses <laughs> and all those things. You're going to say, well, that's it. And so at one point, <laughs> Carla and Rob and I are sitting together. Yes. And Carla brought it up. <laughs> And, uh, and, um, well, do you remember I said, I said the thought you said, what said, do you, you don't think? need to say? Don't say this to Rob. That's not, don't say it to Rob. And, uh, Carl, and I said, I'm the one that's pressing the issue. I said, no, he'll get it. He'll get it. Oscar and his friends. And, and Rob doesn't miss a, a beat and says, power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fun. Yeah. And that's why I love those conversations because yeah. we can share them here exactly. for maximum entertainment. So, uh, Michael Corleone and uh, and your other buddy who are really, really nice guys. And yeah. I hope Michael knows that I like him. I like him a lot. I wish I could hang out with him more. He's a good guy. And He, he drove up from, in, uh, from Phoenix just for the show. He's a good guy. I, I like his friend that? a lot, too. Five hours? Wow. Wow. His friend was animated and funny Alex. and had funny yeah, things to say. Yeah, he's great. He's great to hang yes. out. And, and so we walk into the downtown Grand, and they're at the uh, roulette table. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they'd had a few adult beverages as sure. well. So I'm trying to get the story from them. Then I heard that uh, that you turned in relatively early on the Saturday Oh, I got the, I got the hook. Yes. You got the hook. I got they the hooked hook. hooked you out of there. Uh, was that after you spilled the drink on the <laughs> left table? Well, let, let me clarify here. Making right. friends. Because I haven't heard any of the, okay. the and details. And influencing uh, people. <laughs> so, we, my, so we left. We walked over to the downtown Grand right. in the same direction, at least, with Mike and Carla. Okay. And um, we, we stopped. Somebody was uh, fun, funny enough to bring me a die cast, a really Quality looked like a uh, little G wagon. They said, "Here's your G wagon." Remember, I almost bought something that yeah, was your Mercedes. Yeah, your my Mercedes. Mercedes. My Mercedes. My Mercedes. And I said to Shane, "I just got to run this up to the room real quick. I didn't want to lose it." Sure. And so I come back down, and I said, "They're like, hey, like, are you ready? To, do you want like it's it's funny because the mentality of Alex, at least compared to Michael, my friends, they thought we were going to do what we usually do is." Some club in on the strip or whatever we were going to do, right? And I was like, no, 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 we're gonna hang out here. Like this is where everybody hangs out, right? Yeah. You never made it out of the uh, no, out of the downtown no, no. Bar. And I had, yeah. no, okay. I, I didn't. Re- walk- what I figured, yeah, I, I like hanging out with my friends, but I'm there for work. We as dropped well. you off there, and we yes. held, uh, we headed over to the Golden Nugget. Yeah. So uh, on Saturday night, I ended up uh, playing blackjack with the guys, and Shannon's never played, so we were kind of trying to teach Shannon. We played uh, with our friend Derek from Zappos. This was at uh, the downtown grand. Yes. Did you play at one of the tables where they deal from the hand? Don't even, don't can't even conceptualize how they dealt. They First just, time they for just, me, that they was just dealt. cool. Um, Very single cool. Yeah, and single I uh, did not win. It was <laughs> reckless uh, gambling. Right. And yeah, that's another thing I heard. I forgot yes, about that. it was reckless. That you were betting like mass, like you had one stack, and you were able to hang for a while, yes. but you were betting like the whole. It's stack. like two hundred bucks. He does okay. this. This so, is his yeah. He thing. does that. What's yeah. the count? Puts down. Yeah. Uh, What's you know, the count? Right. Uh, so that didn't work out, and then uh, you can do better, Mike. You've probably been. Oh, you, I've seen you do this. The slot machines. My friend Michael, when he's losing, uh, it's easy to blame the rubes around you that can't play blackjack. Right. Um. So he, I could see he he shimmied us to uh 
a slot machine, and then he disappeared back to the blackjack table. Oh, he just pawned okay. you off. On yeah. his own. And I, and now, technically, yeah. as a degenerate gambler, yeah. I will tell you that I have heard from my gambling experts that the play of players around you in no way affects the uh, – the, the, the no, game. It does you against the dealer ultimately. I've That's been in this place before with Michael and, and Shannon's like, Michael, like he left us. What a jerk. And, and Shannon's like in this f- funny place where she's tired and in pain. Yes. But also wants to try to hang. And I said, no, no, no look at Post-trauma. him. Post trauma. Yeah. I said, look right. at him. He's fine. He's doing what he does when he doesn't want to gamble with anybody because we don't know how to play the game. And is he one of the guys that says, Oh, you, if you hadn't taken that hit, the dealer yeah. would have buzzed. You drive yourself nuts if you do I've that. I've done that, though, because you I can't. know how it's I think dealers. everybody so does do that, that, especially you when you've got, you're gambling real dollars and yes. not just like $5 chips. Right. Yeah. You have a hard 19. I'm going to double down. No! Oh! Uh, Thank you. You okay. know the rules still. All right. Well, let's wrap yes. this up okay. when we come back. Uh, I will tell you why I'm never gambling again. And uh, <laughs> more fun and more, more thrills. On the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Tijuana was live. 2019 was an unforgettable weekend with two great shows, the sights and sounds of Las Vegas, along with plenty of laughs and great times. And as we all settle back into reality, the fans have something they want to say. Josh Frumkin from Germantown, Maryland. It was an incredible weekend. Thank you, Mike, Rob, Oscar, and everybody for a fantastic weekend. Hey, my name's Veronica Mauer. I'm from Mount Vernon, Washington. Thanks for the great weekend. Doug Carlson, Spokane, Washington. I don't remember much, but I'm pretty sure I had a damn good time. Thank you all. (laughs) Thank you, Mike, Rob, Oscar, Pony, Maddie, and Katie for putting together one sensational weekend for us. Here's to 10 great years and for 10 more to come. Wow. Thank you, Jim, for doing that post-production yeah. like that. Awesome Quick. stuff. Wow. Awesome that stuff. is really wonderful. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Brought to you by Quip. The makers of the Quip electric toothbrush want you to know one simple fact. If you have good habits, you are good. You are good. A-OK. That means to be good, you need to brush for two minutes twice a day and floss regularly. And uh, that's it. That's all. Uh, Quip makes that simple <laughs> with their electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric toothbrush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide you to a full and even clean. And the Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use the perfect amount every time. That's interesting. Yes. Uh, Plus, Quip delivers a fresh brush head, floss, and a toothpaste refill uh, to your door every three months with free shipping. So your routine is always right, and that makes you good. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. If you go to getquip.com slash TMOS right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash TMOS, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash TMOS, Quip, the good habits company. Okay, so we are not at the roulette table yet, not yet. with you. Right. We, uh, we just we are... finished up uh, what was... Uh... Erratic, um, yet fu- in my eyes, fun uh, yes. time at the blackjack table. Uh, my, we've now been relegated to the slots, and by that we, I mean my wife and I, right? And uh, our friend Derek from Zappos, and my wife is now looking for my friend Michael and our friend Alex, who is Alex has now left our table for a different blackjack table. So they're all they want nothing to do with us. They're trying to I mix wish- it up, Mike. Change the mojo. <laughs> Listening to this, I wish I'd gone right over to the downtown Grand after the show. Yeah. That's what I wish I'd done. I really would because. Nobody, w- I didn't see anybody over the nugget this time. So if all the fun was down at the mm-hmm. uh, listener hotel. Yep. That's where I should have gone. And um, at that point, Chan said, well, we can't do that. Let's go do something else. And I said, all right, well, have you played roulette before? I don't really know how to play. And she said, well, let's go learn. So we go and walk over there. What a rube. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, just, just not for nothing, I had a very similar experience with Jimmy learning how to play roulette on Sunday night. Really? Watching Jimmy, but go ahead because okay. I, I would like to add on to this after so the fact. We, Simple concept. We, <laughs> all right, go ahead. We get there, <laughs> and, and I, I, it's a simple. I get it that if it lands on black or red, or if there are numbers, like I, you land on your number, you get uh, uh, times. You win. 30, yeah, you win. Hey, <laughs> duh. And, and Spinning wheel. I think I had roughly two hundred bucks. I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I don't really remember. And uh, right. I said, and I see a couple listeners there. And what's great at a roulette table that if you're if you get on like the pass line, or you get the the, the uh, eight to 30, 34, whatever, right. you can win multiple ways. 
Right. I thought it was too much work to put it on multiple numbers. So it's I not really the pass line. I, I was going to let it call. Slide. I don't know. The pass that's line a crap. is crap. That's a yeah. crap. Okay, what is it then? Well, you're Odd, then even, you're... red, black, and then your numbers. You're betting numbers. inside and outside. Okay, outside then. And right, then right, there right. are combination bets that you yeah. can do. Okay, well, I didn't want a combo. It's all based on the numbers on the wheel. It was a mm-hmm. lot of work. And I said... And he's sleepy. So I would take I would take the the, the stack of chips. By the way, it looked like a, a $5,000. Because they're dollar chips. Yes. Yeah. And then I would just move the big stacks over to uh, where I thought we was going to go. Right. And I, and I hit twice. So then I had six stacks of chips. That's great. So when like, you hit, did you hit on the color or did you hit on a number specific? I heard I hit on a number range. Two to one. Picks okay. two to one. All right. Very okay. Good. Oh, that's excellent. So, so did you learn that you put like in between the numbers? I didn't. Like, that was like still too much portion. work for me, Mike. It was, it was, it was, it, I couldn't handle it. It was, it was too much. Now right. I had th- uh, six stacks of chips, really high stacks. High and, society. And then uh, listeners started coming over and they started buying me drinks. And I said, all right, why? Well, I, I said, I have a drink, but I, will, I guess I'll take this other drink. So I had three drinks in front of me and six stacks of chips. Weren't they free in the casino? Yes, they but are. they were bringing me drinks. They were bringing, bringing, bringing me over okay. drinks. You can expedite the alcoholism by paying. So <laughs> I I remember taking four of those six stacks of chips and putting it on the line. And I was like, no. And I was like, I got this. Ah, nah, nah, nah. Uh, and then. I know the noise. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing, too, to and pay off. That went away <laughs> really quick. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, it'll be okay. And then I took the next stack, and I was as I was moving the stack... I knocked over one of the three drinks in front of me. And Shannon said, it's time to go. <laughs> and I and, and old me, healthy me, not broken me, would have been like, you go ahead. I'm here right. to, you know. Yeah, kind of what was happening yeah. down the Bro- street on Friday night at the Golden Knight. Broken me, <laughs> broken me, he said, you're probably right. Bye, Michael. Bye, Alex. Bye, everybody. Bye. I went sadly There's not going to be any, to no pancakes out. tonight. No pancakes. No <laughs> staying out all night. Bring out the paper towels. That and, was it. Uh, there he is. That was it. And, uh, Moved on. Did you finish up at the roulette table? At I ended up. I that? remember. Ended up losing uh, oh. and quickly. And then I woke up the next morning. I said, "Oh my God! Thank God I got the hook." Because yeah. I would have tripled down to try to get the, that money back. Sure. I said the same thing on uh, Friday night when uh, when it was just me and Carla and Jimmy who had a knack. and Because Jimmy doesn't stalk. I know this for a fact. Right. Jimmy's just Jimmy. No. And we, uh, we, we did two things with Jimmy. And I'll try to get to this uh, quickly because we've got the mailbag coming up after right. this. Uh, the two things were Friday night at the Golden Nugget. Uh, we ran into Jimmy. And um, after the show at the meet and greet. I believe in earnest, I began to uh, enjoy the brown liquor. Right. And uh, so at uh, speed, and, and by the way, I'd taken a month off yeah. after my previous uh, bout. Did it make it better? Uh, let me just say that I, I you know, I, I have to be extremely careful now. That's all okay. I can tell you. All right. Because I just don't manage it like I used to. Understood. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a professional. When I, you know, God, I long for the days where it was seven nights a week. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, now I just don't know. What. So the conversation with Carla was just like Carla trying to get me out of there. And me being, I turned into like insta prick. You know, where I'm like, oh, you just want to go out and hang out with all the young guys. Like, you go, where gets out of this? You know what I mean? <laughs> Insta prick. And Jimmy's like, okay, come on. Uh, it's going to be all right. Anybody. But anyway, with all my being a, I mean, I'm being super nerd, uh, not super nerd, super jerk. She drags me out and we go back to the hotel. And uh, and I went on the apology tour in the morning, you know, to her right. and to Jimmy. So. Everything's cool with that, and uh, and I'm I'm apologizing. And then we bump into Jimmy again on uh, Saturday afternoon, where we uh, we ate before the show. We had a like a three thirty uh, little din din. Okay, and we had that at the Golden Nugget, and we uh, we did that. Now Sunday, we've got the whole day because we're taking the uh, red eye back, which uh, I, as I say, I recommend. I've never uh, felt better. Just, yeah, well, listen to my <laughs> voice. Listen to my voice. That's a red eye voice, right? Yeah. There. Mm-hmm. So we run into uh, Jimmy. And uh, we, we we text Jimmy. We're going back and forth. And Jimmy says, come join me. I've got some stuff for you from the show. Jimmy held on to a lot of stuff that listeners brought for him. All right. And uh, meet us at, you know, he said, meet us at Moondoggies. You know, of course he finds <laughs> it's real close to where you are. I've I'm never like, seen Moondoggies in my life. No, there is and, a billion places to go in Las Vegas. Every one right. of them fantastic. And Jimmy right. ends up. 
at the Moon Jimmy, Doggies. Jimmy ends up at a place that was, uh, you know, basically a cinder block wall with a tap. Uh, that's the bar that he uh, that we walk into. But it's a Buffalo bar hey. and the Buffalo fan. So I am actually quite positive on rendezvousing before because we have a, a whole day to kill. I'm sure, not. Yeah. Yeah, let's go out and see. But I'm really, and Carla, we are thinking primarily food, food, food. We want to okay. eat something. We've uh, slept in, and we want to get out there. So we rendezvous with uh, with Jimmy, and uh, we walk in and open the door, and it's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, last place. I mean, because my voice is uh, is absolutely shot. Mm. And uh, at, the, uh, at the table where Jimmy has set up shop with his goose from his bar and with Jimmy and with all these Buffalo jerseys is Dennis Murphy. And I'm like, oh, even better. That's terrific. So I'm uh, I'm really happy about that. And uh and we finally uh <laughs> I I am sitting there and I sit down and all I'm thinking about is chow. Right. I'm thinking about food. And they have put down a pepperoni pizza right in front of us. A big square pepperoni pizza. Nice. And Jimmy says, I don't know who this belongs to. I don't know who this belongs to. It might be ours. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking at this thing, and I'm not even talking to people. Jimmy should know he yeah. is literally a restaurateur. Yeah. Oh, he's he's <laughs> like uh, he's America's host. Yes, and uh, and so I, I look at it back. I look at it back. Finally, I, I take the plunge. I look around like I'm stealing mm. something because I know as soon as I take a corner of that pizza, somebody's going, "Hey, fat man, my slice. That's ours. That's yeah. my you know? slice." Uh, so, but I'm fine. And then once nobody tells me anything after the first one, I'm just you know, Carla. Carla says to me. You might want to slow down, and uh, you know. And I look over at her, and I'm like, "And why would that be?" <laughs> uh, so anyway, so you know, because Carla's managing me like the whole week, sure, because I'm a toddler. And uh, and there was one. Uh, I say this story for the purposes of uh, entertainment. There was a celebrity sighting in this place. Oh. Apparently, uh, there are two celebrity stories about this bar, Moon Doggy. Right. Number one, this apparently is where OJ has been to watch oh, the Buffalo. Oh, look at that. And there is another infamous celebrity who is in the bar and sitting in the corner. Uh, Rob knows already, so don't don't uh, give Chant, it away. I shall not. Who is sitting in the bar with his chihuahua oh. in his lap, a long-haired chihuahua. Who could Jimmy, it be? Jimmy broke it to me on think, Sunday night. Think infamous, Oscar. Infamous. Infamous. With his chihuahua. Yes, mm, I, I can offer a clue as well that I think might steer right, I'll him give a Oscar little the bit. First, okay, uh, I'll uh, right. I'll offer the first clue. Okay, right. male. Yes, he right, is. Thank he you. is a male. A guy, and not a Las Vegas native. Right. Mm, infamous Las Vegas native. Not Next, a Las. And by the way, uh, Pony Pony and Maddie can play as well. Uh, Maddie won't have a choice. Uh, won't have a chance. Right. Mm. But, oh, uh, Maddie has yeah, to play. Uh, but the next word is victim. Oh Jesus! Um, oh, no, it's it, not Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I, I know it's not Liberace because he's dead. He, that's he true. He lives right? in Vegas, though. Uh, he does. This guy lives in Vegas. He's a victim. Um, oh God! Oh, Wayne Newton. Oh no, it is not. <laughs> no, it is not. Wayne what was Newton. he a victim of? Why, I don't know. why are you eating my pizza? Is, thank you. Is he a, is he known as a Buffalo fan? Uh, yeah, Publicly? maybe, maybe for people that have done a deep dive on it, but I never processed it. Me neither. You know, he might be originally from Buffalo. Cato Kalen. Uh, would you like to know the uh, next uh, hint? Please. The, uh, all of his, uh, his activity of victimhood took place in my former hometown of Manassas, Virginia. Oh my God. Great clue. Manassas, Virginia. Victim. Listeners now are going, I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't know, Mike. I don't know. National crime story. Oh, I got it. I got it. Um, uh, Bobbitt. Bobbitt. Yes. Bobbitt. John Wayne Bobbitt. Yes, 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 yes. John Wayne Bobbitt. Whoa. Bobbitt. He lives yes. in Vegas? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that is it. And, uh, wait, why isn't That's that kind working? of a strange. I mean, what are the odds? And he was sitting there very sadly in the corner with his. Uh, with his uh, what does he look like now? Uh, he Beautiful. Looks, uh, like, like, <laughs> he's, he's gorgeous. He's got a little beard, and, yeah. uh, you know, he looks fine. He looks well done fine. Uh, but we have to take a break. Alone? And we'll tell you more about that when we come back and get our mail back. Yeah, we did. Yeah, by himself. By himself. Carl was going to walk over, and uh, you, know, I said, you know, he was accused of rape, Carl. Oh, you might want to. Oh, that's right. Thinking. I forgot about uh, yeah. that. Well, it's a big story. We, do, we watched the documentary last night. He should have uh, picked on up. On Amazon. Mike, he should have um, picked up his check, but let him cover the tip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll take a break. <laughs> 
Come back with your mailbag right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. All right. We're going to play a game. I need to know why you don't subscribe to the bonus show. Too expensive? Wrong. It only costs pennies a day. Less than your daily latte. Bore on the floor. It's like the regular show? Wrong. It's 60 uninterrupted minutes without commercials and without censorship. So you'll hear words like shit, fuck, sucker, and piss used as a verb. Bore on the floor, and you'll stay on the floor, my little piggy, until you go to MikeOmerishow.com and subscribe to the TMOS bonus show. Support the boys and oink, little piggies. Grunt for me. Oink, 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 piggies. Now f*** off and call my helicopter. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Cornerstone. Uh, listen to some wisdom from my good friends at Cornerstone. If you want to predict the future, you don't need a magic eight ball. Just rely on solid economic indicators, otherwise known in the financial business as science. Science! science. Uh, right now, economists believe the housing market is entering a golden period. For the first time since World War II, we have mortgage rates below 4%, while at the same time, unemployment rates also below 4%. That's a golden period that will stimulate activity, and we expect sub-4% mortgage rates uh, and sub-4% unemployment through at least the end of 2020. You don't want to be left out of this golden period. Home appreciation is up. Tappable home equity is at an all-time high. Rates are at uh, record lows. And with Cornerstone's offer to meet or beat any competitor, this golden period is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to eliminate your PMI, pay off credit cards, student or car loans, or do home improvements. Deal with the good people like Joe Rogers over at Cornerstone yes. First Financial. Mm. Mm. Good guy. Uh, call him, 202-625-1221, or check out uh, their website at cornerstonefirst.com. God, the voice is going like <laughs> by the second here. Uh, <laughs> Cornerstone First. Cornerstone First Financial. Like, like my body. <laughs> Personal attention <laughs> from application to closing. <laughs> We're going to do the mailbag tomorrow. Okay, it's a good plan. Not doing it today. My good voice plan. is gone. Manana. Uh, hey, wow. Uh, so anyway, John Wayne Bobbitt. Yes. At, uh, at this place, sadly, sitting in the, right up by the sad. front. Sad. With a little chihuahua dog. And Carla, like, doesn't know the story. So, you know, she runs over and says, no, no. I mean, no. He was involved in all sorts of, uh, yeah, he was the one that got his uh, Schwan sticker chopped off. Right. But he also was, a, you know, there were alleged uh, horrible deeds that he did. And then he did pornos and all that. And I said, you best stay away, my yeah. dear. Please, come on now. Was Jimmy <laughs> excited yes. to see him? Yeah, Jimmy. Of course. It's who, pop culture. Who, Jimmy, who, Jimmy's who like, spotted him? Uh, Jimmy. Had to be. Huh. Yeah. Jimmy spots every celebrity known to well, mankind. Jimmy almost drove his motorcycle at 75 miles an hour into a ditch when he saw a couple of Blues Brothers reenactors driving along a yeah. highway in Wisconsin. I mean, in Wyoming. I, I mean, I was looking in my rearview mirror on my motorcycle, and we are literally going 75 miles an hour. And Jimmy, the Blues Brothers mobile, comes out of nowhere. And I look at the back, and Jimmy's going... <laughs> <laughs> out of his mind. Do, do, I mean, do, really. Do you... Um... Do you know if he had sausage on his pizza? Uh, oh, <laughs> that's it. No, but he was sad. I mean, I, I looked. Uh, he doesn't. He he didn't really speak to anybody. He was sitting alone, mm. and uh, you didn't you know, get the I impression he was the, there to be seen. No, no, he had a buffalo. He was there to see the Buffalo Bills. That surprised me. He had a Bills yeah. jersey, jersey, and I got the impression maybe that's his regular little haunt uh -huh. uh, with his dog. Uh, but the he dog's was, uh, strange. you know, and then by the way, Carl and I dove into the uh, documentary about all those events. We're like uh, almost at the end now. We're at the point where she's on trial now okay. for uh, chopping it off. He's Lorena. been acquitted. He's been acquitted, and uh, they both they both share one uh, one quality that I've noticed, and and that is, duh. Oh, really? Where yeah. in Manassas yeah, not, not exactly was this? Uh, I'm not sure exactly where it happened, mm -hmm. but there are aerial shots of our old house there. Oh, my when, God. Uh, when they show me that. We, we lived literally right next to the courthouse. Yeah. We were down the street from the courthouse. And, uh, and, and just everything he went through and all the people he associated with, were, you know, I'm like, hey, there's our town. Yep. There's Manassas. Real sad not to live there anymore. <laughs> there, 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 there. I seen him there. You know, anyway, it was. Uh, can it, I, uh, it was, uh, while you're on the topic of Manassas, can yes. I give you a one. Pointer as to what it's like to play roulette with Jimmy Cerrito. 
Yes. You hear this a lot from the croupier. Not yet, sir. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, because of his ADD. Yes, yes. because yeah, with, as the, soon with the wheel as, and colors. As soon and bright, as they put down colors. the little glass thing that marks where the oh, you can't mess with that. And, or as Jimmy right. said, well, he put down the magnifying glass, so I guess I can give my money. I said, <laughs> yeah. no, no, he has no, to sir. move the marker. Not sir, yet, sir. Take your hands off of the board. And then he's like, well, I have a favorite Buffalo player, but I can't play his number because there's no forty-eight. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yes, Jimmy, the numbers stop at 35. Oh, no, no. I, uh, you know, we hung out with J- uh, Jimmy on Friday night, had dinner with Jimmy on Saturday, and hung with Jimmy on Sunday. So, you know, as far as my uh, one of my best Jimmy. buddies, he's the to best. Be, uh, to be able to be there with her, he is the ultimate Not uh, yet, character. Sir. He was so funny at the show. Uh, but really, three days is that, you know, Jimmy's like Vegas. Yep. A- after three days, I'm good. I'm cool. <laughs> That's fine. Then, you know, I've Jimmy's done like Vegas. Chicken. There's good parts and bad parts. Did anyone have <laughs> an epic meal, like something that you wouldn't have had anywhere else? Because it's known uh, for, its, for its cuisine, no, right? No. No, we didn't do that. Well, no, Jimmy we had really the scampi. Uh, yeah, well, at the at the buffet. Right. When he walked yeah. up and uh, we were in the buffet and uh, he at the Golden Nugget. <laughs> Quality. And, uh, and You said it was a little <laughs> better than you, you expected. It. it was good. It was better than the yeah. win. Yeah. You know, where every win had to have everything for everybody because it's a richy rich joint. Sure. And it has to have everything. And everything was kind of tepid where the food was really hot at the Golden Nugget. I liked yeah, it better. That's good. And, but when Jimmy saw the scampi, I heard, ooh. <laughs> yeah, he's very excited. <laughs> very, very excited. So uh, anyway, it's uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's a big bowl of okay. We're uh, very happy with that. <laughs> and now that I've got my equipment working properly, we can move on. Not yet, sir. <laughs> on Voice Gone Thursday, uh, Wednesday. I'm sorry. I had so much energy at the beginning of the show. We'll take a break and I'll come back with news you may not need on the Mike O'Mara. Throughout history, man has sought the ability to conquer all things. He conquered nature, medicine, his enemies. But one thing always eluded him. Man could not conquer time. Until now, thanks to the new Mike O'Mara show app, time has become man's minion. When you listen to TMOS on the new app, traveling back in time is as easy as hitting rewind. Stop time in its very tracks just by hitting pause. And if you want to travel into the future where God knows what awaits you, a simple fast forward will get you there, if you dare. Plus, you can stream the show live as it happens thanks to TMOS Live. You can control time as long as you take the time to download the app and make sure you are running the updated version on time. Do it now! The updated TMOS app. Your passport to a great time. In the past, the present, and the future. Plus, (laughs) TMOS Live. Always on, always there. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, welcome back to the Michael Mara Show, brought to you by Zappos. Hey. Let's hear it for our good friends at Zappos. We're fresh off our trip to Vegas. Woo. They made the 10th anniversary Las Vegas spectacular a reality. We've uh, never worked with a better group of uh, folks. They're really, really wonderful people. Uh, our buddy Derek and the Zappos family are the best, and that's why we're so pleased to continue our partnership with them as they celebrate their 20th birthday. 20 years of the absolute best customer service and a selection that is unmatched. Thanks to over 1,000 trusted brand names, Zappos.com is able to help millions of customers create a long-lasting wardrobe they love. Our partnership is built on listener support. So whether it's footwear, outerwear, anywhere, basically if you wear it, get it at Zappos. We just ask that you support us both by accessing Zappos through our website. Just click the banner. As always, Zappos.com provides fast, free shipping, free and easy returns, 24-7 friendly customer service, and a 365-day return policy. Thanks to Zappos.com, there's never been a better time to look your best. Thank you, Zappos. You make us look good. News. News. Kevin Hart will release uh, a real and raw new Netflix docu-series oh. in December. This is not a comedy stand-up mm. special. Uh, the 40-year-old actor and comedian said in an Instagram video Tuesday that his docu-series, uh, Don't F This Up, will premiere on the streaming service December 27th. 
The docu-series consists of six episodes and uh, follows Hart in his day-to-day life. The show charts the ups and downs of his recent personal and professional life, including the uh, the Oscar controversy. Mm. Uh, he stepped down as host in uh, 2018 after his past homophobic tweets resurfaced online. The posts dating back to 2011 have uh, since been deleted. Uh, here's the quote. I am releasing a documentary with Netflix, Hart says in, a, in the video. It's a look into my life over the last year and a half, which has been a hell of a roller coaster. Peaks, hills, valleys, ups, downs. It's as real, as raw, as transparent as you can be, and something I think people need to see. I would watch that. Well, Absolutely. Like and Mike, but keep in mind, Mike, it's this. real and raw and being released really close to the release of the new Jumanji movie. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about that tomorrow. Rob and I tomorrow have to talk about these movie companies that play PR games oh, that are I just so it. transparent. It's yeah. no fun. Yeah. Uh, here's a blast from the past. Rosie O'Donnell. You hey, haven't heard baby. that name in a while. Uh, she says she's hoping for the best when it comes to her future with her fiance. Mm. The the fifty the fifty seven year old television personality addressed reports that she and Elizabeth Rooney <laughs> Rooney. Rooney? <laughs> uh, that they have ended their engagement, uh, and she did an interview on Monday with Extra. O'Donnell uh, was attending an event for her nonprofit, Rosie's Theater Kids, when she gave the update on her relationship. Here's her quote. We are still figuring things out. It's hard in the public light. Uh, that's according to O'Donnell. It's hard for a person who is a normal person in a normal job, so I'm kind of used to it. We are trying to figure it out. I'm a hopeful person, and I'm hoping for the best. It sounds like it's done. So right? sad. Yeah. I mean, it really. Remember does. when uh, her TV show got canceled and she didn't have to be nice anymore? <laughs> We're trying to work out what's going on. She said, uh, "Rooney, Rooney? Is, a pol- is a police officer. Really? I'm sorry. And uh, she's <laughs> young, and there's a lot of attention on us. Yeah, We're just taking it slow." So I don't know what's That's going on. That's such a, oh, like, it's a sad but weird statement. It's it is. sad but weird. Because. Yeah, a police officer. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a celebrity, and I, I don't think you have to highlight that you're dating a non-celebrity. It's almost right. like a knock on her. Yeah, she's right. blaming it on her. Because she's normal. She can't How handle it. How long was she with Portia de Rossi? No, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. All right, very. Different cool. celebrity. When Portia de Rossi was a cop. <laughs> Both celebrities, by the way. <laughs> officer de Rossi. She was a cop. Detective, oh, sorry. Detective, forgive, sorry. Me. Uh, forgive me, forgive me. Amelia Clark, oh Game of Thrones. Oh. Uh, she is not going to take her top off on command just because she did a lot of nudity on Game of Thrones. Yeah, Oscar. <laughs> but apparently, I can't believe this is still a thing. But I guess it is. A lot of people in the industry haven't gotten that message yet. Uh, during a recent interview, she said she gets pressured to go nude all the time. Here's her oh, quote: it's "The worst." I. Hey, you get that, don't you? All the time in Vegas. Stop it. What's under that that tux? It's hard enough to do without you doing this, big boy. Loosen that tie, big boy. Here's her quote. I've had a lot of fights on set before where I'm like, no, the sheet stays up. And they're like, no, you don't want to disappoint your Game of Thrones fans. And I'm like, F you. Oh, (laughs) wow. On a related note, uh, Dax uh, brought up the fact that a lot of uh, Emilia's early sex scenes on the show were, uh, quote, uh, she was on some Dax podcast, by the way. Were, Probably uh, Dax quote, Shepard. Mm-hmm. Uh, virtually rape scenes. And Amelia gave her co-star Jason Momoa a ton of credit for making her feel comfortable during that. She said, quote, he was like, sweetie, this is how it's meant to be, and this is how it's not meant to be, and I'm going to make sure that that's the way it goes. He was so kind and considerate and cared about me as a human being. She added, quote, he was crying more than I was. So uh, that's there's that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I remember see, those I don't scenes. I remember those scenes because it was she was forced into that relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like yeah. the big warrior. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It was. Uh, but yeah. remember and what that, they say: when you're Aquaman, no one can see you cry underwater. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. God. He's he's like sprinting to the finish yeah, line. Yeah, I love today. it. Uh, according to a new survey, we basically write off the end of year uh, when it comes to our health and diets. 41% of people use the holidays as a reason to punt on healthy habits, and one in three have already started postponing those habits until January. The survey also found 47% of people say they already know they'll give, give in and break their diet during the holiday season. The top foods that we break our diet for are cookies, yes. pies and cakes, and home-cooked holiday meals. 
Yeah. Okay, tell me something I don't know. 30% of people say... This is hard-hitting a- research. 30% <laughs> of people say they've had a moment during the holidays where they've unbuttoned their pants because they ate too much. You sure that was a food survey? It was uh, like they surveyed Gene Simmons. <laughs> yes. Uh, after the holiday meal, my pants mysteriously <laughs> fell to the floor. Uh, overall, the average American will gain six pounds over the next month and a half. Ice. That's the same amount of weight we uh, packed on last year, six and a half pounds. And that, for me, is called Tuesday. <laughs> According to a new study of this year's Black Friday ads, there are a lot of reruns from last year's Black Friday ads. And some of them are back at higher prices. The study found 18% of the deals and uh, major, that major chains are advertising this year are the same products they advertised last year. Oh. That's interesting. Uh, the five chains with the most recycled products are Harbor Freight. What is that? What oh, is Harbor I Freight? I think Harbor Freight paid to be on this ad because I've never heard of them in my life. Me neither. Office Depot next. Well, Office yeah, Max yeah, yeah. next. Ace Hardware next. Sears, then J.C. Penny. The five with the uh, fewest uh, repeats are Costco. Mm-hmm. There you go, Rob. Okay, thank you, Mike. Fred Meyer. Do you know that? Uh, oh, Oscar no, Fred I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Dell. Dell, got to get a Dell. Sure, got to get a Dell. Lenovo. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Pony loves them. Formerly uh, and, Dell <laughs> or IBM. And, and Best Buy. Uh, so there you go. I love going into Best Buy because it's so crowded anymore. It's, it's empty, right? Thank you. It's the merchandise customers. Nothing. Is you just that. said you love going into Best Buy, so it's so crowded anymore. I think he was exaggerating that it's so crowded. Yeah, because oh. it's so cr- it's there's no there's no merchandise and there's it's no people. Dizzy when you said it, those words. It didn't words make that sense, way. but I right. I uh, oh, you grabbed deco- the sarcasm. Yeah, Thank so you. North Dakota. Uh, and now a little something something. There's a 25 year old guy named Gregory Rary from <laughs> Warren, Ohio. And on Sunday night, he went into his parents' house and got into a fight with his 29 year old brother. Chad Sibick. Oh, no. Apparently, Gregory went over to ask for money so he could travel to audition for America's Got Talent. Hey! When his family wouldn't kick in the cash to support his dream, he got angry and punched his brother in the face. As the cops were arresting Gregory, he told Chad he'd kill him if he filed charges. Okay. Because, again, that wouldn't make it so Gregory, uh, that would make it so he couldn't audition for AGT. <laughs> Uh, he was charged with domestic violence, aggravated menacing. There's no word on what talent Gregory was uh, going to show off on the show. My money is anger management. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Good luck with AGT. Hello, stars. Uh, anyway, we'll take a break and then come back with Rob Spiewak and the Audio Vault right here. Thank you. Hey, how's it going, my TMOS friends? This is your boy Tomo. You probably haven't heard from me a while because I've been Hi, deplatformed. Tomo. I've been censored. Yeah, that's what happens when you love this country. They just uh, cancel culture you. Yo, well, the good news is TMOS is still spreading the message that the mainstream media wants to hear. Today's show is brought to you by foodprepper.darknet. They may have deplatformed us, but you still need to eat. <laughs> All right. Well, if you need me, I'll be down in Florida in my bunker. There he is. <laughs> that is. That's Todd. It's we ma- missed him in Vegas. It's magical sometimes what I find in my email box. See, I just we, don't expect you know, tomorrow, it. He sent it over. Can we? Uh, can we uh, take some time to talk, Todd, tomorrow? One hundred percent. Okay. You don't. Can't get him on the show. We might as well talk about him. Uh, <laughs> this portion of the program brought to you by our bonus packages. The best thing about our Las Vegas trip is that Oscar and Shannon cheated death and survived that nasty automobile mm. collision. Yes. It's terrifying when two things hit each other with such velocity. Horrifying, really. That is, unless the objects that collide are comedy and fun. <laughs> what are you doing? What's that? What are you doing, you big old crown royal? <laughs> then the collision doesn't result in death and destruction. It results in the TMOS bonus show. Right. The bonus show, a commercial-free, no holes barred you know. Let us fill your airbags with joy. Just click the banner on our website, and you help the show, and you get bonus content, and you'll love it, and it's an extra sixth episode. It makes a wonderful holiday gift. I mean it. The TMOS bonus show, brought to you by Tylenol Capsules. Tylenol Capsules, discontinued in 1982 because they were being split open and laced with cyanide. Remember that scandal? So true. All the poisonings 
were in Chicago, but it horrified the entire world. Tylenol capsules, guaranteed effective because your headache disappears the moment you're dead. (laughs) Tylenol capsules, a product of Johnson & Johnson. We now return you to Carter Country. Already. (laughs) That's so from the audio. Carter Country. Oh, I can start well. Victor French and Richard Paul. Mm. Carter, Carter Country, Country. Yeah. sitcom in 1976 set in Georgia. Yippee. Let's table Tom Hanks until tomorrow. You want to? Please. Yeah, because right. we got a lot of talking to do. Tomorrow, put it at the front of the show in the vignette tomorrow. You got it. We'll talk about the scam right. with all the... It, it just can't be... It's got to be pre-done. I, there are three Doobie Brothers that, as of this week, were touring as the Doobie Brothers, but they had a great announcement when someone walked out on stage and did an encore and announced... For their 50th anniversary next year, I'll, I'll Michael go. McDonald is touring. They're going to play Jiffy Lube live. I didn't see any Florida locales when I scanned. Okay. But okay. they're definitely going to do it. And you mm. know what? Michael McDonald still sounds great. And has forever. He has. And, uh, that's why I'd love to see it. I'd love to see the whole 50th band. anniversary. That's a good show. Mm-hmm. I would go see that. Yeah, I'd like to see the doobies you know, yeah. before anything happens. Uh, who's missing? Jeff Skunk Baxter's missing. But yeah, I don't he think should he be sang. on that tour. Yeah, I don't but think he's he also sang. really early in the uh, the run of the Doobies, but he's also a great musician. So, but how wild is it to think that the Doobie Brothers now a fifty year old band? Yeah, yeah, that's truly one of my all time favorites. Crazy. Absolutely. So check that out, folks. Um, now, speaking of the past and the present, Arthur C. Clarke. Do you remember that name? Yeah, he wrote. 2001 A Space Odyssey, the book. That's right. Okay. So they interviewed him in the year 1974, and they said, what do you think it's really going to be like in 2001? So let's go back to 1974. Cool. The prediction he made, this is chilling. The big difference, in fact, when he wanted to wait for the year 2001, he said he will have in his own house a console through which he can talk to his friendly local computer and get all the information he needs for his everyday life, like his bank statements, his theater reservations. Oh, wow. This will be in a compact form in his own house. He'll have a television screen and a keyboard, and he'll talk to the computer, get information from it, and he'll take it as much for granted as we take the telephone. I wonder, though, what sort of a life would it be like in social terms, I mean, if our whole life is built around the computer? They will also enrich our society because it will make it possible for us to live really anywhere we like, almost anywhere on Earth, and still do his business through a device like this. Basically said Siri. The future. Pretty good. Not Pretty bad. Pretty right huh? on. Absolutely. Scary, scary. Uh, have you bought any Christmas gifts for your son yet? No, I have not. They released the most dangerous toy in mainstream toy making. And the amazing thing is, it's been around a long time. Do you remember something called the Pogo Ball? Which is basically a wooden platform with a rubber ball built in the middle of oh, it. Oh, yeah. So when you bounce up one. Of course, you perhaps remember this catchy commercial. <laughs> They've rebranded it as the Pogo Trick Board, oh. but it's exactly the same. So if you don't like your kids, buy Why it for them. Why is it dangerous? I think because it really has no true center of gravity. Yeah, it's unpredictable. You probably didn't have core strength when you were growing up, but if you have core no, strength. No, not like I have now. <laughs> and, and you're a kid, you can probably jump on it. Core strength. It's, yeah. it's dangerous. Pogo ball. Po- Paga ball. Yeah. Paga ball. Wear, wear a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Now, how about this? Music today is, I would say, not as good as it was in the past. Uh, Time Magazine, my arbiter for cool, has released the best five records of the past 10 years. Oh. And I put together a montage. Tell me if you like any of these top five songs of the last 10 years. We could have had it I do like this one. I gave it a uh, thumbs up. I do. Yep. That's a good song. Taylor Swift. Yeah, I agree. Success. Yeah. Paramore. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Sorry. Mike, I know you love Dirks Bentley, don't you? My daughter does. Oh, really? You know, it's Dirks, right? Yes. Of course. Choose the most. Lil Nas X. I'm gonna give that a thumbs down. It's so catchy though. I can't. I, I, but it's so catchy. It got so popular so quick. I just couldn't get. I, I couldn't get it. on board. I love it. You love it? I know you do. <laughs> you love bandro driven pop rap music? I do. I do. I do. <laughs> no, 
I enjoyed a great deal. That's funny. While we're talking music, a story that I did not know on Watch What Happens Live, they had Celine Dion, and obviously her biggest hit is the song from the Titanic, yes. My Heart Will Go On. She did not want to record it. This happens a lot. They get talked into recording a song. But check out the real backstory of this song. There's one song that I didn't want to record. Which was what? My Heart Will Go On. No. It is true. <laughs> why, why didn't you want to record it? I don't know. It, it didn't appeal to me. I was probably very tired that day. I don't wow. Know. Very tired. Thank God they didn't And my husband said, let's hold on. Yes. I to, to the writer and he says, let's try to make a, like a little demo. And I sang the song once and they built the orchestra around it. I never re-sang it wow. uh, for the recording, actually. Wow. So, so the demo is the actual recording. Wow. Time yes, of course. <laughs> all right. Can you imagine all right, all right, that? Hold on a second. You be Celine Dion, and I will be Andy Cohen. And this way, I love that show so much. Okay. okay. So you're telling the story about the ta- Titanic. Okay? So I did not want to record wow. the song. I did wow. not want to. <laughs> did not want to. <laughs> wow. And your eyes never point the same Come way. On. <laughs> but think of that song. That massive hit was a demo that, that she, she didn't want to do. And she yeah. didn't want to do it. That's pretty wild. Wow. <laughs> and Mike, let's do a throwback to the Kevin Hart show. We'll, we'll okay. close with Please. this, all right? Kevin Hart will star in a documentary series on Netflix. The working title is Comedians in Cars Getting Concussions. <laughs> <laughs> That's your magic audio ball. <laughs> Have a great Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> Oh man! So obvious, but so spot on. Dead yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. When they're when they're just there. Yeah, grab you know? it, baby. And by the way, everybody in the world of comedy, podcasters, stand-up comedians, <laughs> all see that and go, "Why didn't I think of that?" Exactly. One? That's what I thought. Awesome. God damn it! That's it. We got to get out of here. Don't forget, our bonus shows are for sale. This is the time of year we love to sell right. as many as we can, ladies and gentlemen. So please go to the Mike O'Mara Show website, MikeOmaraShow.com. Grab yourself a bonus show. We would appreciate that. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Is that John Bobbitt? Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Go Skins! Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. I'm afraid we have a bad image, sir. Market research shows people see you as something of an ogre. You're a club them and eat their bones. If you want to throw down in fisticuffs, fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you. Dyer right here. Sensei. Dyer Sensei! Dyer Sensei!